All right, we're recording. And let's start. So last Thursday, we had, we ended on page like six of our notes. So these are notes from the second, second little packet. And then I posted the third packet earlier today. Uh, the third packet just has some more linear function examples. And then it starts, as I said, exponentials. Not sure we'll get there today, but let's just work on some more linear stuff. So, uh, and so there's only two pages, but I think we ended last time by talking about slopes. Uh, and so that's what this is continuing. So uh, the balance in your college payment account C is a function of the number of semesters Q you attend. Interpret the function C of Q uh, equals 20,000 minus 4,000 Q. And there's not really any strict math work to do here. It just says interpret, right? So you just want to try to understand what this function is modeling. So what is C of Q modeling? I think there's one L in model, <laughs> modeling. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. And so that's a, that's a word you'll see that we're going to talk about more and more is, is modeling. So basically the idea is that you have a real life thing. In this case, it's your college tuition. Uh, and you want to construct a function, a mathematical function that kind of pops you out the numbers for whatever you plug into it. So it models it. So it, it represents it mathematically. Um, and so this one, uh, you know, any ideas, any ideas? What does the 20,000 represent? Nothing. So uh, the 20,000 here, it doesn't tell you, right? So you kind of have to figure it out. So if you look at this equation, C of Q equals 20,000 minus 4,000 Q, the way you can read this is that you're starting with 20,000, starting with 20,000 in your account, right? And every semester, you'd pay 4,000. So starting with 20,000, and every semester costs 4,000. I said it was your base amount. I just didn't realize my microphone was off. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, so it's your base amount, your starting value, your initial value, your, your Y intercept. Any of those are, are the same thing. It's just what, what your, your bank account starts at. And then every semester you take out four grand. So for instance, how many semesters could you go without, how, how many semesters could you pay for, I guess? Five. Five, yep. Because four times four thousand times five is twenty thousand. So after five semesters, your bank account will be empty, assuming there's no other deposits. But yeah. all right. So questions there. So again, this is just you're just trying to reinterpret the the equation. All right. Uh, and so this next one is in a similar vein. So now you instead of going to college, you are saving up to go to Seattle, uh, and you save four thousand dollars. Uh, and you anticipate spending $350 each week on rent, food, and recreation, which is crazy. I went to Seattle once. I think I spent like, it was like, I swear it was almost $300 a night for this one. It was horrible. I mean, Seattle was nice, but it was expensive. So I can't, this isn't a very realistic situation. Um, I would recommend go to Vancouver if, you, if you're going up there. Although, so uh, what was that? Olympic National Park? Beautiful. Go there and then go to Vancouver and save yourself money. Anyway. Not that Vancouver's cheap. Uh, how long can she afford to stay in Seattle? So it's very similar, but this one doesn't give you a function. So let us create a function. Uh, what, what's the first thing we should do when we, when we wanna model something or create a function for something? Write an equation. Yeah, yeah, we wanna write an equation. And so to do that, we need variables, right? And we need names. So what are our two variables gonna be? How long she's going to be there. Yep. So in this case, we are spending mo money each week. So we'll take our units to be weeks. So I'll say my W is number of weeks in Seattle. Okay. Uh, and then the other variable is going to be our bank account, right? So we have 4,000 in our bank account as it is. So 
for the bank account, I don't know, maybe I'll do B equals amount uh, in bank account. Great. And now we need a relationship between them. And so I want to express B as a function of weeks, W. Um, and the reason you're doing that is because I want to see how long I can stay, right? So I want to see, uh, you know, how big W can get before I run out of money. So I want to say B of W. And any ideas what the function is going to be? Um, 350 W mm -hmm. minus 4,000. Just, just the opposite, but yeah. So it's going to be um, every week you are spending 350. So since you're spending, it's going to be minus 350 W. Oh. Yeah. And then plus 4,000. So alternatively, alternatively, of course, you could write this as 4,000 4, minus 350 W, right? Um, and if you look at the previous example, it's, it's very similar, right? This is my starting value, my 4,000. Starting value. And every week I spend 350. Spend 350 every week. So that's our function. Uh, and if I want to figure out how long I can stay in Seattle, so assume here that I'm going to stay in Seattle until I have zero dollars left. What would I do to determine how long I could stay in Seattle? Using my, my newfound function. You can make a table. Yeah, you can make a table. That's one way. Um, let's do that and see how that works. So I'll do it on the sheet of paper because I'm out of room. So again, my function was B of W equals, and I'll write it as 4,000 minus 250 W. Right. So make a little handy dandy table, um, W, B. And yeah, ta tables are always good. Always good. If, you, if you're always trying to, trying to study a function, you can make a table. As, as we noted, like in that first class, making a table is basically like making a graph. So you're just trying to understand how the function works. Uh, in one way or the other. And you can just plug in some values. Now, uh, this is kind of a, this is a good point. So what, what values can W take? Can, can W be negative? No, it no. can't. It can't, right? So, um, and it, it could be zero, right? Zero would be just, I haven't left my trip yet. Um, but just note that W can't be negative. Can't be negative. Right, because it's weeks. Negative weeks don't make sense. So in a lot of these problems, you'll be talking about um, this would be the domain here. So domain of B is all positive W. So remember the domain are all the values that you can plug into a function. The range is everything that function spits back out at you. So I'm, I, we're just talking about the domain here and it's just kind of a side point. It's not really important, but I wanna kind of stress that in a lot of these kind of applications or modeling problems, you'll encounter uh, situations where your domain is what's called restricted because certain values don't make sense in the context of the problem. Right? Anyway, long side point, let's just do some points. Uh, one, two, three, four, and let's, we'll see what happens after that. All right, so you just plug in your handy dandy calculator. Let's clear the screen. I don't know if you can see it, but oh, you can, beautiful. So 4,000 minus 350 times, oh, well, zero is obvious, right? You times that by zero and you just get 4,000. So that one, I guess I shouldn't even have noted 4,000. All right, let's do the next one. 4,000 minus 250 times one, 3650. It's so clear on there, 3650. Maybe I'll do that, there we go. And then 4,000 minus 350 times two, 3,300. And if you wanted to, when you're doing a table like this, there's a lot of ways you can do it with your calculator. So um, if you have one of these graphing calculators, you can just do minus 350 and it will use the previous answer. So for instance, if I do it again, I got 2950 and you do it again, you get 2600 and you, you keep going, all right? 
Um, so this is, this is one way. You could make a table, like I said. Uh, and, but you'll notice what's happening is it's going down, but it's kind of slow. And so your table is going to have to be kind of big. <laughs> uh, and so I'll jump. Go up. Can you just do like bigger numbers, like go up by five? Yeah, you can do that too. So if I go up to, I'll jump to nine. How about that? Um, nine. Let's see. So 4,000 minus 350 times nine is 850. So we're getting closer, right? So if you notice that it's slow, just take a big jump and see what happens. Play around with the numbers. Um, let's try, let's do 10 and then 11 and 12, and then we should be done. Oops, it's not my camera. Okay. Great. So for 10, so minus 350, 500, 11 is 150. And so there we go, right? So at 11, it'll be 150. That's it. I can't go 12 weeks, right? right? Because if I go 12, 12 weeks, if I go 12 weeks, I'm down to negative 200. So it goes down and down and down by 350s until you hit 12 weeks and you're negative and so you're, you're, you're out of money. So the answer is that she can go 12 weeks or 11 weeks. So, so she can go. She can go 11 weeks. Just because at a certain point you'll be negative and you can't have negative money, generally speaking. Okay. Any questions with that? Right, so that, that's the one way to do it. And I do want to note the faster way. So the faster way is, so you'll know, I run out of money when I hit zero dollars in my account, right? So all, all you can do as well is you can start off with this equation we developed. So B of W equals 4,000 minus 350. And you can just set it equal to zero and solve. So you set this equal to zero. And now we just solve. So uh, remember your algebra a little bit, right? So I have, I'll rewrite it. I have 4,000 minus 350 W equals zero. And so I want to solve for W. So I'll bring the term with the W on the, to the right. So basically you're adding 350 W to both sides. So I'll, maybe I'll do that. I'll put 350 W and then I'll put, I don't know, plus 350 W. Some people have really nice notation when they do this with the plus. I, I always just move, think of it moving, so I never really write it like this. But um, anyway, it's 4,000 equals 350 W. And now I want to get W by itself, so I just divide by the 350. So 4,000 over 350 equals W. And this does require a calculator, right? It doesn't have to be graphing, but you do want some calculator for this now because this isn't like a nice number. 4,000 divided by 350 is 11 point around to four. Great. And so that's the same answer that we had before, essentially. Because if you go back to our table, you'll note that between 11 and 12 weeks, we ran out of money. Uh, and so this tells us that exactly 11.4 weeks we can stay. So we can, and, and, so we can stay uh, weeks. Thank now, you. could you subtract the 4,000 and make it negative 4,000? And then when you divide by the negative 350, it'd become positive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that too. Yep. Okay. So, so what she's saying is, um, this is your answer, by the way. But uh, what she's saying is, uh, you could do minus three fifty w equals minus four thousand. At the initial step here, you bring the four thousand over, and then you divide by minus three fifty. So it's minus four thousand, or minus three fifty, and then when you have two negatives, they cancel each other. So either. Either you, if you multiply two negatives, it's the same, it's one, or if you divide a negative by a negative, it's a positive again. So uh, you, they cancel and you get 4,000 over 350, right? Which is of course that. Okay, so when you're doing algebra, there's no right or wrong way to do things, generally speaking. That's kind of silly though. There's a wrong way if you're doing it wrong. So, <laughs> but you know, if you're just moving things around and dividing correctly, you, there's no right or wrong way. Any other questions with this? So this is the algebraic way. This is the table. Uh, you could theoretically do a graph. I'm not, not going to do that. But uh, yeah. All right, let's move on. So uh, that was that. And then let's just do this last example from our notes from before. My dog is trying to hide the treat that I gave him. Uh, he always puts it, he, he'll go on the bed and he'll try to dig. It's like a comforter and he'll dig on the bed. 
and like he doesn't know it's a comforter so he thinks he can dig through it like it's dirt and it's horrible because the poor he's it's, it's it's always so sad to watch him try to hide his tree anyway so this one uh is not uh an application it is just a straightforward straightforward uh it's a straight kind of just algebra math problem all right so it says find the equation of the line going through the points two three and four minus one so we haven't done this yet and this is an important skill finding the equation of a line between two points. Uh, uh, we'll use it, so in the project for this section, we'll use this, actually, this, this skill. So make sure you kind of make a note, or at least follow along a little bit <laughs> uh, how to do it. All right, so I, as I said, I always like to graph. So maybe I'll make a little graph just to see what's happening. And so I have two, three, and four minus one. So two, three, I'll make one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then minus one is one, there, I'll do like that, there we go. Okay, so two, three is one, two, one, two, three. Right, so I guess I can label them. One, two, three, four. There you go. So two on the X, three on the Y. Okay, so that's this point, two, three. And then four minus one is down here. Right, so, if I found my staples again, what we want is we want to find the equation of this line here going through those two points. So this is what we want to find. Want this line, right? So we know that the equation of the line is what? What's the equation of a line going to be? Just in general terms. Um, X plus B. Yeah, y equals mx plus b, right? So you should just ingrain that in your head. Uh, you know, you, you might never use it again, but one day down the line when you're, you're a nurse or you're a police officer or something, you should be like, what's the equation of a line? And you'll be like, y equals mx plus b, and you'll save a patient's life. Not really, but it's possible. Um, so <laughs> this m is the slope, of course, and this b is the y-intercept. Right? And again, so the slope is rise of a run. Basically, it's how much the function is going up or down based on how far to the right you're moving. Um, and then the y-intercept is just where it hits the y-axis, y so where it hits this vertical line down the middle. Right? So this one's very graphically intuitive. All right. But uh, so to find the equation of a line, you first find the slope. So let's do that. Find slope. Okay. And so we did this kind of problem last time. Last time we, we ended with a couple of problems where we found the slope uh, given data points. So here we're just given the two points. So again, the slope M is going to be Y uh, last. I did it Y1 and Y0. Uh, but again, you can use Y2 and Y1 if you like. And the order shouldn't matter as long as you're consistent. So Y1 minus Y0 over x not, or x1 minus x0. And so again, this is rise over run. Right? So this is just the change in the height of the function between the two points. This is how far to the right you're going on the x-axis. Right? Anyway, you plug it in. So I'll use um, this as my y1, y2. This is my y0, x, or x0, uh, y0. So maybe I'll label these. So uh, I'll label on up here. So this I'll say is x not y not. And again, the order shouldn't matter. If you do things correctly, if you swap the order, you'll get two negatives out front and they'll cancel each other. Uh, and then this is x1, y1. All right. <laughs> and then you plug it in. So you just you just take the two points and you, you label them correctly and then you plug them into the rise over run formula. So y1 uh, identified to be minus one. Y not, I said was three. Uh, x naught as uh, or x one sorry is four, and x naught was two. There you go. And now we just compute it. So what do I get? I get minus one minus three. What is that going to be? Negative four. Yep. And then four minus two is just two, of course. So I get minus two as my slope. And you can check to see if this makes sense, right? So if I go to my graph. Uh, at, at x equals two, I'm up at three, right? I move over to three, 
and I go down two to one. I'm at, when I'm at three and I'm at one, I go over to four on the X and I move down another two to get to minus one. So every time you go over one on the X, my Y value goes down by two, All right? And again, I think last time I had kind of drawn that. So uh, like, like this, so between two and three, like that. So this is my, I go down two over one. And then here, I also go down two and then I go over one. It's a little hard to see, but just note, whenever you go over one on the X, you go down two, right? It's just, that's, that's what the rise of a run means. All right. Now, instead of doing all of that math, can't you just count in squares? You could do that, but um, it's sometimes just not precise. You know, if everything is a nice whole number here, but if I give you really ugly fractions, it, or it, it you know, it's not, you could, you could, it's harder to count. <laughs> but yeah, you could totally count in this case. Any other questions? All right. Uh, so that's my M. And then to find B. Don't you just plug in one of the Y uh, coordinates into the equation and then find B? Exactly. With the slope? Exactly, yeah. So we know the slope is two or minus two. And so what I do is I plug that into my Y equals MX plus B. So Y equals minus two X plus B. It's like a game of Clue. You want to find what B is now. Um, and so what you do is you plug in either of the two points you have into X and Y and then solve for B. It doesn't matter what point it is. It can even be a third point on the line. It could be just any point in the line. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'll plug in two, three because it's positive, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter. So, so this is again, plug in M and then um, I'll plug in a point. So I'll plug in three equals minus two times two plus B. So this is plug in either point. And now you can solve for B. So what's B in this case gonna be? Seven. Exactly, right? Because I have three equals minus four plus B. So I add four to both sides to get seven equals B. So I'm out of room. I should have put the as a whole page. Um, I'll make it down here. So this implies that B equals seven. And once you know what B is, you just plug that in, you're good. So this tells you that Y equals minus two X plus seven. Sorry, I'm out of room. <laughs> Any questions with, with that process? So again, for the first project we're gonna do, we're gonna, it's gonna be on population uh, and you're gonna have to model a population linearly and exponentially. And so to do it linearly, you're gonna have to do this kind of process where you take two data points uh, that you have, find a line that kind of best fits them and uh, use, find the equation for it, right? Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to write down the steps too. I kind of did it up here, but so let's see. To find the equation of a line from two points uh, on the line that, that. So, so find slope. So again, that's just M and then uh, Y1 minus Y0 over X1 minus X0. Right? And then you plug in, plug in M and either point and solve for B. And then you just, you write Y equals MX plus B. So then you just write for whatever your points were, for whatever your M and B were. So basically you just, you find M by this equation. Then once you find M, you plug M into Y equals MX plus B, take either point and plug that in too and solve for B and that gives you B. And then once you know M and B, you're basically done. You just plug both into that, that form again. Okay. That would be your answer. Let's just try one more. Actually, maybe let's see. Do my notes today have any? Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll do more of these in these next notes, actually. So I won't, I won't make another example. Any questions so far? Awesome. So, so these are the notes I posted this morning, I think, like at eight. Uh, 
So it's the end of three, two. And then again, I don't think we'll get to four five, but we'll see. All right. So we'll just do some more line examples. Uh, the first one is about moving. So you're choosing between two truck rental companies. Company A charges an upfront cost of 30 bucks and charges 0.49 per mile. Company B charges 20 bucks up front and a little more per mile. So the question is, when will A be a better choice? Right, and it's kind of a tricky question um, because the idea is that while company A charges more up front, they charge less per mile after that. And, co so, and company B charges less up front, but they co cost more per mile. So it's like a balancing act, you know what I mean? If you're doing a very short distance, then company B makes sense. You know what I mean? If you're going one mile, <laughs> then company B is going to cost $20.79 and company A is going to co cost $30.49. But if you're going 100 miles, it might make sense that company A will cost less because you have less cost per mile, right? So we want to see exactly where company A is a better choice. Uh, any ideas on how we can do this? All right, so uh, yeah. if you haven't, yeah? yeah. All right, uh, um, so let's see. So the first step is I wanna write equations that model both of these. So I wanna, I wanna see how much it will cost per mile for company A and then per mile for company B. So let M equals miles. Okay. So we'll just do things per mile, All right? And then let C be cost. Let C A and C B. So this is going to be the cost of going M miles with company A and M miles with company B. So this is cost of going M miles with A. And this is the cost of going M miles with B. Right? So that notation makes sense. They're just two cost functions, both in terms of miles. And we chose miles as our, our independent variable here because everything in the statement of the question depends on the mileage, right? Like the only variable that we have here essentially that we can vary is the miles. And that's, so that's why miles is our independent variable. Okay. Anyway, now we wanna find an explicit description of these. So let's do it. So C of A. So any, based on the statement of the question, what is the equation gonna be for C A? So would it be, um, 4.9 M plus 30. Exactly. Yep. It's going to be 4.9 M plus 30. And so the, the where, where they got that is that 4.9, like, oh, sorry, point, point 0.49. <laughs> there you go. Point 0.49. Point 0.49. Uh, if you could do 4.9, but it would, I don't know what that would, it would units would be weird. Um, so point 0.49 cents. Uh, we're going to do it in dollars. All right, so 0.49 M. So every mile, we, they charge us about half a buck. And then $30 is just, it's invariant. It doesn't depend on miles. It's just the moment you take the keys for the truck, you pay 30 bucks. Okay. What about CB? 0.79 plus 20. Exactly, yeah. 0.79 M plus 20. And it's for the same reason. The $20 is just the upfront cost. You pay that by taking the keys. And then every mile you drive after that is 0.79. All right. And so the question is, again, when will A be a better choice? So when will A cost less? When you're going farther. Exactly. So we want to figure out when exactly that is. Any ideas on how we can figure out when that's going to be? On the point of intersection. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the point of intersection. Uh, and so there's a property of lines that says that when you have two lines that aren't, that have different slopes, they'll always intersect each other. So for instance, these lines both have positive slope, right? 
So that means they're both increasing. They're both, they're both going up. If you were to graph them, they would, they'd be going up. Um, <laughs> so while they're both going up though, the second one has a bigger slope. So it's increasing at a faster rate. And so eventually this is going to kind of overtake this one because this one's growing faster. So that point of intersection is exactly where company A will be better choice. So point of intersection, point of intersection, um, the point of intersection, I'll say POI is exactly where A is a better choice. So anytime including the point, well, the point of intersections are the same, but anytime after the point of intersection, A will be better, right? So how do we find the point of intersection? Did you say that? Set them equal to each other? Exactly, you just set them equal. And that's a general property of functions. If you wanna find the point of intersection of any functions, it doesn't have to be lines, it can be exponentials, it can be quadratics, it can be sine function, it can be anything. You just set them equal. So, so set C A of M equal to CB of M, right? I'll then plug in the two equations that I got here. So what do I have? I have 0.49m plus 30 equals 0.79m plus 20. All right, and so I wanna solve for m. What do I do? Subtract 20 and mm -hmm. both sides. Yep, so I'll move the 20 over here. So subtract from both sides. And so I get, and again, I, my notation for this isn't hot but I'll put a minus 20 there, minus 20 there. And so what do I get? I get 0.49m plus 10 equals 0.79m. Right. Now what can I do? Divide by m. Careful, if you divide by m now, you'll certainly cancel that m, right? And you'll cancel this m on the other side, but you'll have a 10 over m, which is undesirable. What do I need to do? Be 10. Sorry? We just subtract 10 from each side? Subtract 49 m. Um, yeah, there it is. You want to subtract the 0.49 m to basically, you want to get all, everything with an m on it, you want to get to the one side and everything with- So combine like terms? Exactly, you combine <laughs> like terms. You get everything with the m on one side, everything without an m to the other side. So I'll bring this over here. So again, you can, I don't like writing this, but you can put point, you can do like the minus, minus business both sides. So I'm basically subtracting 0.49 from both sides. And so they cancel on the left, obviously. And I get 10 equals, and I'll leave it straight, 79m minus 0.49m. That's just what, 0.3m, right? Yep. And now I can divide by the 0.3. All right. So now I divide. So I get 10 over 0.3 equals m. And again, that's not something you'd know like how to compute. So you plug it in any calculator. It looks like I'll round to say 30, 33.3 okay. miles. All right, so a little algebra. Um, but this is this this is around the level of algebra that we we uh, hopefully can work towards if if it's been a problem so far. But just to review, um, we set the functions equal. We plugged in the definition of the function, and then we combine like terms. So I brought the twenty over to the left, so then I have just ten, and then I wanted to get all of the things with the m on it to the other side. So I brought the 0.49, I subtracted it from both sides and have just all m's on the right now. So there's 0.3m. And then you just divide by the coefficient or the number in front of the m to get 10 over 0.3. Now, if these were all whole numbers, could you just graph them and find the point of intersection? You could do that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the graphing would work. Again, if, every, if the numbers, only, only if they really work out nice, would that be easy to do? You could also use it, do it in a calculator. So let me see. Um, if you have one of these, again, if you have one of these, you can plot. And I, my graphing, my calculator abilities are not up to snuff, to be entirely honest. But it should work if you put the two equations in here, uh, plus 20, and then go to graph. Depends on the window. 
my window might be off. Yeah, you just set the window. It's a whole thing. Um, but you can play around with it if you're familiar with the, if calculator, you can do it. Um, you play with it. It's all anyway, I'm not into calculators. I'd rather you do it algebraically, to be entirely honest. Um, but if you know how to use a calculator, feel free. All right. Would you recommend us buying one of those calculators? Not really. Okay. I just this is mine from high school to me. <laughs> so I, I aren't I they like that. really expensive? They're unnecessarily expensive. And this thing has like the it has a computer in it that's like as powerful as like like a Nintendo, like an original Nintendo system. It's like it's nothing. It's not worth it. It's worth like five dollars probably, but they charge I think near a hundred, two hundred. It's horrible. Um, just use your phone. Or uh, there's a website called if you're really bored, you can go to Wolfram Alpha. I, just Google Wolfram Alpha. It's a website. It's a computational engine. So, for instance, if you if you plug well, if you plug this into Wolfram Alpha, you put like 0.49x plus 30, comma y equals 0.79x plus 20. If you plug that into Wolfram Alpha, more than likely it would give you a picture of the two lines, and it would probably even give you the point of intersection without doing asking for it. It's a really great website. Uh, it's free. You can just I don't know. It sometimes it's a little picky as far as notation goes. So, I it, it doesn't work for you. You know, you can let me know, but uh, you don't need any of this. <laughs> any other questions? All right. So that was question one. When is A better? After 33 some miles. All right. Question two. And again, the whole point of this is just to get more exposure and more um, algebra playing around with functions. This one is really important. So as I said before, the, the uh, project for this unit is going to be all about populations, uh, modeling them uh, linearly and exponentially. This is kind of like a, like a, like a, a kind of practice run for that process. So uh, it's not exactly like the project, but it's the similar technique. All right, so a town's population grows linearly. In 2006, it is 15,000 some, and in 2020, it's 20,000 some. Right. So the first question, find a linear equation for the population. I'm going to do it off to the side on a separate sheet of paper because I didn't give myself enough room here. Um, but you know, if you, can, if you have tiny handwriting, feel free. Okay. So the first, there, there's a couple of things we have, to, we have to do before we can, we can kind of proceed, right? So basically, when I say find a linear equation, I want to find y equals mx plus b. I want to find m. I want to find b. There we go. But what I have to do is I have to figure out what my points are going to be, right? So in the past, I've, I've made a chart. I've plotted my two points. I've connected the dots. And then I use the y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0 formula. But here, you, it's kind of weird. So it's 2006 and 2020. And you know what I mean? So like, for instance, if I were to graph these, you have some options. What you could do is you could put like 2006 there. And you could put 2020 here. And you could plot, let's see, in 20, 2006, it's 15,000. So I can put 15,000 here, 15, 2, 3, 1. And I can put a dot there. And then in 2020, it's 20,000, just about. So maybe 20,000, 2, 1, 2 is there. And I can put a dot there. And then you could connect the dots. So that's one way. And so you're, but you're, what, when you do that, your x values are kind of funky. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like your x value, x values are 2006 and 2020. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. You can then do rise over run and you're, you're good to go. The other way you could do it though, so this is way number one. The other way you could do it is you could say that 2006 is your starting value. Like you could just say, oh, I'm starting my model at 2006 because I don't, to my knowledge, nothing exists beforehand. Uh, I can say I'm studying at 2006, and every year after that is like zero, one, two, and three. So, for instance, what I mean is I could read, I could sketch it like the following. So, this is number two. I could say my graph starts at 2006, so zero is 2006, so zero will be one, five, two, three, one. And then I'll say that, so 2020 is what 14 years up to 2006 right so one yeah i think so 
Um, so this would be 14. And this, so this is 2006. And this 14 is 2020. So that's an alternative way you could do it. Whatever you like and you're comfortable with is acceptable to me. You'll get the same answer in the end for this problem. Um, all right, but does that make sense? So it's just two ways of interpreting the data and there's no right or wrong way. This way to me is a little cleaner, but this way makes more sense and kind of in terms of the problem overall, all right? So questions there? Um, yeah, I did not understand the thing you just said. So like, so like, it's just depending on how you're setting up your, you're, basically we're defining the variables. So in, in this case here, my X is, is, the, is the year, right? My X is just literally 2006 or 2020 or anything between. And my Y is the population, all right? So that's, that's, that's fine, right? I'm just plotting the points. So this is my year and this is my population. All right. The other way, though, is what I'm saying is that instead of putting my years on the x-axis, I could I could put like years after 2006 on the x-axis, and so instead of numbering them, you know, by 2006, 2007, 2008, so on and so forth, I could number them as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. Where it, okay, so it's instead of writing the big bulky numbers, you just add whatever to 2006. Ex exactly. Yeah, it's just a different way of writing it. So I just wanted, you know, so you have the option of doing it both ways and setting up your equations, your variables, really however you want, right? So you, you have a choice is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and either way, you'll get the same answer. Right. So um, maybe I'll do it the first way just because I think it's a little clearer. But do know, we sometimes we'll do things like this in the future when we talk about modeling. We'll, we'll, kind, of, we'll kind of define our variable in a certain way and work from there. All right. So... Let's do it just this way for simplicity for now. Uh, and so my two points, so this is, let's see, y, x1, y1, and this down here is x0, y0. And uh, let's compute my slope, right? So that's the first step in finding the equation line. You compute m. So uh, let's see if you can see everything. That should work. So my m, again, y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. I've already identified them. So let's see, my y naught here is going to be 2000 or 20212. That's the population in 2020. And then I'll subtract off the population in 2006. So that was 15231. And then I'll divide and I'll take the difference between the years. So x1 was 2020 and x naught was 2006. And now we can compute that, right? So, oops. So two zero two one two minus one five two three one is that number four thousand nine hundred and eighty one, and then twenty twenty minus two thousand six is, as you might have guessed, fourteen. Right? And so you kind of see. What I was, I mean, this makes more sense too now. So what I was saying is like on the graph I had below, your 2020 was represented by 14, your 2006 was represented by zero. So 14 minus zero is 14 again. So your slope would be the same in that case, just the numbering or indexing is off, right? Anyway, so that's my M and you can divide that and round if you like. So four, nine, eight, one divided by 14 is uh, 356, all right. And now we just find our, our B by, as I said, plugging in either point and, and solving. So let's see. So Y equals MX plus B. So maybe I'll put this as M, not find B. Right, so find, find B. Right. So I plug in my M, 356 plus B. And now I plug in either point. Doesn't matter. Um, maybe I'll do 2006 because it's smaller. Uh, so I plug in the my points. So let's see. So my y was the population. So 15, 2, 3, 1 equals 3, 5, 6 times 2006 plus b. 
And so the other, the other way you're doing it too kind of makes your numbers a little, little simpler. Like you'd, you'd have you know, zero here instead. So your life is easy, but it's all good. Uh, and now I compute. So this, again, the numbers are ugly here. So we need, do need a calculator, kind of swoop them in. So 356 times 2006, is that a horrible number? Um, so I have one, five, two, three, one equals that thing, what is it, 714,000? 714,136 plus B. And now, how do I solve for B? Uh, Subtract the 714,000. Yep, exactly. I just want to bring this term here to that side. So I subtract it. And so I get. One five two three one minus seven one four one three six equals B. That's a three. And that's again just is more calculated work. The numbers look really bad, but they're they're just kind of like bad numbers. They're not like the problem itself isn't bad. Let me see. I can't fit this in the screen. There we go. All right, and then uh, let's see. So one five two three one minus seven one four one three six. Oof. So my B here is minus six, nine, eight, nine, zero, five. As I said, the numbers, when you set it up this way, are going to be much uglier. But it's still the same answer. Right? So my equation of the line is going to be 356x minus 698905. So the reason this is so ugly <laughs> is because uh, our, our line, if you plug in zero, that's giving you the population in the year zero, like, like AD. <laughs> and so basically the idea is that the town is growing by 350 people each year. And so if you kind of retroactively go back 2000 years, your population has decreased to a negative extent. In fact, negative 700,000. That's where that's coming from, if, if you kind of think of it like that. So using this other way, if you're doing it in way two, you don't have the problem because basically I'm saying, I'm just truncating it at 2006 and ignoring everything before that. But it's the same thing. Any questions? All right, so numbers are ugly, but it's all good. Um, so two, what would the population be in 2022? So this one, we don't need anything fancy. Um, what, what can I do to figure out the population in 2022? Can we plug it in for X? Exactly, yeah. So in this first part, we literally just found a, a function that gives us the population when we plug in the year. So if I plug in the year, it will give, it'll give me the function. So it's ugly, but this is it here down at the bottom. So I need to plug X equals 2022 into here and see what happens. So, so Y equals... 356 times 2022, and then minus that horrific number, minus 698905. And again, you just plop that in your calculator. So by my computation, 356 times 2022, minus 698905. We should have. 20,927. And that makes sense, right? In the context of the problem. Because if you go back to the beginning, you know, it was, it was 20,000 in 2020. So this is only two years later. You wouldn't expect it to be astronomically bigger because again, it's linear. It's growing linearly. So it's only, you're only adding 356 people every year. And so it, two years, it makes sense. You'd only be up several hundred. Questions so far? All right. And then three, the last part of this question, uh, when will there be 30,000 people in the town? So again, in part one, we found an equation that gave us the population when you plugged in X in number of years or as the year. So how could I find the year when 30,000 people will be in the town? Plug 30,000 in for Y. Yes, exactly. You plug 30,000 in for Y because again, Y is the 
uh, population. It will pop out the population. So if we plug in 30,000 for y and solve for x, kind of working backwards, you'll get your answer. So set y equals 30,000, right? And then of course, we're still using that really ugly formula that we had. So this is three, five, six, x minus six, nine, eight, nine, zero, five. <laughs> and now we need to solve for x. And so again, uh, the, the, if the numbers are uglier here, just by the way we set it up, but it's, off, it's gonna be the same answer, All right? So let me do it on a separate sheet of paper so I have some more room. All right, so again, so I have the equation 30,000 equals 356x minus 698905. All righty, so I want to solve for x. What's the first step? Adding 698,000 to 30,000. Exactly, combining like terms again. I want to get everything without an x on the one side, everything with an x on the opposite side. The only thing with an x on it is the 356x. So I leave that alone and I bring this ugly big number to the opposite side. So that amounts to adding it on both sides. So I get 30,000 plus whatever that is, 698905 equals 365 or 356, sorry, x. All right. And now you need a calculator, you combine those terms. So 30,000 plus 698905. It's horrible looking. <laughs> so I get, sorry, I'm going to move it off. I get 728905 equals 356x. And now what can I do? Divide. Divide, yep. You divide by whatever the number is attached to the x. So I get 728905 over. 3, 5, 6, and that's equal to x. And again, these aren't numbers that you could use, you know, just figure out on your own. So you, you should handy it in your calculator. There we go. Divide by, oops, divide by 3, 5, 6. So it looks like 2,000, and I'll, I'll round up. Eh, yeah, 2048, we'll say. So like, when you're, I don't really care too much about rounding, by the way. So on your home, and I guess in the homework, it's a little more precise because it's online. But as far as like tests and projects go, rounding, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. But um, you, the eight would mean the four rounds up to a five, right? And then usually you round up five to the next. So it, it would be 2048. Anyway, and that would be the year. So by 2048, we should have 30,000 people in our town. Now, the problem with this model is that usually populations aren't linear. Right, so usually if you have a population, uh, it, it grows exponentially, at least like in a vacuum. So, you know, like if you look at the population of Olean, the population of Olean hasn't really changed much. It, it's gone up, it's gone down, but it's still it's kind of in the you know little fifteen thousand range. Um, uh, and, and so these aren't precise models, and these are all kind of situations that are theoretical. But in this theoretical situation where the town's growing linearly, twenty forty eight. Any questions? All right. So let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, I'm just gonna. We only we have about 20 minutes left. Not 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 even. So I don't want to. Obviously, I'm not going to start exponentials. But let me just talk a little bit about perpendicular lines. They're they're more or less fun than anything else. <laughs> it's they're gonna be fun. Right. And again, this is kind of a side topic. It's not strictly, I don't think it's in the book. It's just, it's just kind of neat. Um, and it's a nice graphical kind of line and problem. So let's, let's just do this problem. Let's sketch the lines. 2x plus 1 minus 1 half x plus 3. Right. Have you ever thought about putting graph paper on these notes? I could try that. I could try putting graph paper on the notes. I'll make a note of it. <laughs> this is an idea because we're always doing graphs and that that is true. Let's see, grab paper. I'll give it a go. It'll be possible. All right. Um, Good luck. So uh, let's do it. So I'll make a big chart. 
And so when you're graphing lines, as I said before, I think, strictly speaking, you just need to plot two points. Once you've plotted two points, you can have connect the dots. And assuming your grid is set up or your, your scale is set up correctly, those two points will give you every other point exactly on the line. So uh, let's just graph these kind of quick. So for the first one here, 2x plus 1, my y-intercept is 1, right? So if I plug in 0 for x, I'll get 1 on the y. So maybe I'll put that here. And then you can just plot any other point. So if I plot, uh, I don't know, what's another point? I want to do, let's do 1. If I plot x equals 1, I get 3 because I plug in x equals 1, and I get 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, 3. So it'll do like that. So this is 2, this is 3, up here. So plot points, can you also like use the y-intercept, put it on the y-intercept, and then go up to right 1? Oh, yeah. That's a good way to do it, too. Yeah, so okay. basically what she's saying is you, you put the y-intercept in. So I know the y-intercept is my b, so it's 1 here. So we put a dot at 1 on the y-axis. And then you, you know the slope is 2. So you go over one on the X, that means you go boop, boop on the two, on the, on the Y. So like, so one and then up two. Okay, we can do that. All right, anyway, and then you connect the dots. There we go. And then uh, again, I like to label. So Y equals two X plus one. And you can even put little like boopers on it if you feel like it. That's the first graph. The second graph, let's do the same thing. So the second graph uh, has y intercept three. So I'll put a dot, or the second line, sorry, has a y intercept at three. So I'll put a dot at three on the y axis. And I know it goes through there. And then what's going to happen with the negative one half in front, though? How can we interpret that in terms of the? in terms of the boxes. You're gonna go down one, yeah. I'm gonna two. Go down, exactly. But so the negative means I go down, right? I'm going, I'm having a negative slope, my function's decreasing. So we know that. But the one half means I'm gonna go down half a box every time I go over one on the X. So for instance, if I go over one and I'm at three, I'm gonna go down to two and a half. So I should be like right there, give or take. Right, and again, so it's, um, I guess I'll do it like this. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So I go over one and I go down, it's kind of tiny, but I go down one half. It's not, you can't really see that. Um, and then you connect the dots again. There we go. Right. And this is my other line. So y equals minus one half x plus three. And again, if you don't want to do like the whole box thing, you can just plot two points. Plot it at x equals zero and plot it at x equals one, which is what we did. All right. So these are perpendicular to each other. And my graph might not be exactly accurate if you took a protractor on it or something, or that's, I think that's the right thing. Uh, you'll, you should see that this angle is 45 degrees. Like they should be right angles. So these two lines. Are right. Angles. To each other. And by right angles, I mean that each of these box, each of these little intersections, like this is 45, this, or this is 90, this is 90, this is 90, that's 90. They're all 90. Um, so they should be right angles. So again, 90 degrees. Like if you took a piece of paper, the corner of a piece of paper, and you put it in here, again, it's, it's an approximation, but that's, that's pretty dang close, right? So it's 90 degrees. And if you could check, so this one here too, Right? It fits a piece of paper in it comfortably, 90 degrees. And then this one, 90 degrees. And the other one is going to be where my projector is, but you understand. They're all 90 degrees. And these are called perpendicular. We call these lines perpendicular. Right? 
And I think that's the next piece of paper, actually. So we say two lines with slopes m1 are perpendicular. If, and so the condition under which they're perpendicular, we can kind of find by inspection. So what's the relationship between two and minus one half? They're negative reciprocals. That's the word, negative reciprocals. So it's gonna be minus one over M2. And again, if you've seen this before, negative reciprocals. Negative means negative. And reciprocal just means one over the other. So it's minus one over the other, other uh, uh, slope. And you'll see, if you negate and flip minus one half, you'll get two again. So you, they just kind of bounce back and forth from each other.